Ah, yes. Call of Duty Black Ops. This is my second favorite Call of Duty game, second only to Modern Warfare 2 in my personal opinion. Black Ops is considered by many to be the height of the franchise, the golden age of Call of Duty before microtransactions ever took over. Even though some games after it didn't quite implement such features yet, it is still considered by many to be the best in the series. So today, I'm going on a trip to the past and looking at Black Ops again and discussing my experience with the game and what I loved and or hated about it. So let's get right into it. First things first, this game is the first game that introduced a currency system, the first of its kind for a Call of Duty in the form of COD points. No, 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 not that bullshit. Get out of here. Nobody likes you! Anyway, COD points were the universal currency in the game. You had to use it to get basically everything, ranging from perks to weapons to killstreaks to equipment and even camos. Some stuff was still locked by levels, but you still had to shell out the money for the stuff you wanted. But this was a unique system and many thought it would be a staple for the franchise moving forward, but every single game since then has had different versions of this that never quite lived up to the fun aspect of COD points. But why is that? Well, this has to do with the fact that this game introduced wager matches, a mode where you could gamble your COD points in different tiers of amounts to bet in an attempt to boost your cash stack, which you would need for the lucrative and very expensive gold camos and other high-end camos. You also needed money for contracts that, if you completed, would gain more money and XP for some of them. The game was built around this currency system and it worked so well which is why many people loved it. Especially since you could make so much money it was ridiculous and you'd never need nearly the amount some people had. But this game also commits one of the biggest sins in the franchise as well and that is its very, very poor hit detection. In fact, it's the worst in the franchise. The connections for this game in general were some of the worst, but the hit detection stands out as being incredibly poor in comparison to, say, the Modern Warfare series, which had very good hit detection. Even Call of Duty Ghosts and Infinite Warfare have good hit detections, but Treyarch games have always suffered a bit from this, Black Ops 1 being the worst offender. But where it did get that wrong, what it got right was map design. Map design in this game was a lot more thought out and detailed and in-depth than a lot of the current games, as this game came before the whole three-lane map design trend. Although some of that is seen here, it's not nearly as prominent, and each map felt unique and had very different flows from one another, which created a lot of unique situations and fun experiences that I feel we don't get nearly as much with the current games. But that is part of my opinion, and some of you may disagree with that. One of my favorite things was this game didn't have those stupid bounding boxes and bushes that current games tend to have, meaning you could do stupid shit like this. Cause I'm a snake a snake. Another thing that is maybe a little mixed depending on if you believe it or not, since I don't know if this is true I won't state it as fact, though some of you may know better than me. Theater mode was one of the coolest things about this game. Since it was brand spanking new at the time, you could take the camera and do whatever you wanted with it, including watch clips with your friends. That feature never returned in the titles after that that included theater mode, unfortunately, but this is also what some people believe is the cause of the connection issues with this game since it was always recording as well as playing. But nonetheless, this was an awesome feature that has since been removed for a very long time now. I believe Black Ops 2 was the last game to have a theater mode. Killstreaks were also incredibly unique at the time, since this was the only game besides Modern Warfare 2 that had options for killstreaks, and it wasn't a complete copy-paste of the MW2 streaks. Though some are similar, this game's killstreaks were some of the coolest, even if not the most powerful. Unfortunately, this is also the game where the weak killstreak trend began to surface. Ever since this game, killstreaks have been very underwhelming, save for a select few in certain games. One that comes to mind that was one of those select few was the Drone Swarm from Black Ops 2. But what about weapon balance? Well, I'd have to say they did a pretty good job since none of the guns come to mind as being incredibly overpowered, but if I had to give that title to any one gun, it would probably be the FAMAS, but even then it wasn't the most OP thing ever. The thing about this game is that you saw all kinds of weapons being used, where there was always something new to try out without feeling handicapped. That can't be said about a lot of the current games, unfortunately, as they usually have one or two dominant weapons, and it remains that way for a very long time. Also, I just want to point out that this game has more assault rifles than Call of Duty World War II had maps at launch. 
let that sink in. Okay. What about the DLC? Well, first of all, I apologize for not having any footage of the DLC. I don't have any of it at this time anymore, so sorry about that. But from what I remember, and keep in mind, I am looking at this a little bit through nostalgia glasses without actually going back and playing the DLC. But in my opinion, the DLC maps were okay, but they were some of the weaker maps in this particular game. Save for a couple, but overall the DLC maps were okay and fun to play. They did their job at spicing up the game, and didn't have a very negative impact in my opinion. Whereas some current games DLCs actually make the game worse in some cases, these ones to me did not. I have a lot of fond memories of this game. This is the game where I met some of my best friends that I still know and talk to to this day. So in that regard, I have to say I had the absolute most fun with this game over every other Call of Duty, even none of the current ones that I still play with these people. This is the best one to me for that very reason, but mechanically and in terms of gameplay, I do find it lacking. I still, for that particular thing, I find Modern Warfare 2 to be a superior game. Even if kind of broken at times, <laughs> as we all know if you've played that game. But that is my opinion, and you're welcome to disagree with that. But this game was a, at the time it was, you know, it was just a game playing with my friends. But I look back on it, and I think that I wouldn't know the people that I know now. I wouldn't have the friends I have. I wouldn't have the relationships I have with some people if it weren't for this game. And I wouldn't have the fond memories of spending time with those people if it weren't for this game. And to me, that is a little bit more valuable than the actual mechanics of a game. I value my memories a lot more than I do the actual way the game played. So for me, I love Black Ops 1 as my favorite game in that regard, but I still believe Modern Warfare 2 was a better game, personally. And to those friends of mine who played this game alongside me, <laughs> this is for you. Okay, that was a bot in combat training, but still. I had a hard time getting hardcore match on this game, and specifically that map, so I had to compromise somehow, but anyway, I know I didn't cover everything, and this isn't a review of the game or anything, more just a look back at the time for nostalgia purposes and for fun. Also, for anyone wondering why I'm comparing this game so heavily to Modern Warfare 2, that's because I made a video very similar to this one about Modern Warfare 2, and so... I figured it would be okay to compare the two since this is the successor to that game. It is the one that came out right after Modern Warfare 2. So naturally it's the one that people would be comparing it to at the time, and that's how I decided to look at it as well. So there's my reasoning for that. But with that said, I want to thank you guys very much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you liked the video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you want to join my Discord, link is in the description below. And if you like the content I'm putting out, feel free to subscribe for videos every single day. And with that, I will see you in the next video. Okay, bye!